right, so in this video, what I want to do is I want to introduce you to the Kotlin Standard Library. So certainly don't have time, nor do you want me to go through everything that is in here. Uh, but what I want to do is just talk about some considerations in terms of how we look at this documentation and what are some things that might um, throw you off or confuse you. So I'm looking right now, let me make this a little bit bigger, uh, at the Kotlin Standard Library. And you'll see these are, as it's described, essentials for everyday work with Kotlin. Um, and there's a lot in here. And there's a lot in here that we're not going to understand yet or use throughout the entire semester. But this is a place where you will find documentation for things that you might find yourself using in the future. You might see used in a particular project or you might realize that you need and discover through, through more Googling. I would suspect that usually the right way to find this stuff is sort of directly through Google rather than browsing the documentation. Um, so really what I want to do is kind of give you a user manual. Like let's say that you find yourself uh, on one of these pages. Uh, let me see if I can find something that's kind of uh, safe to look at that might make sense to us that I'm not going to go through later. Um, let's see here. Uh, or how about text? Okay, here we go. Um, here we go. So it's Kotlin.txt. Um, so the, the Kotlin standard library, just like the Java standard library that Kotlin builds on top of, has different sections, right? It's broken up uh, using an organizational technique that we'll talk about later. Um, but for now, the idea is this package, uh, Kotlin.txt, has information, as it said, functions for working with text and something called a regular expression, which is not something that we talked about in this class, but is a tool for matching certain patterns within strings and other types of text. Let me show you a couple of things up here. So first of all, the version selection. Uh, I'm looking right now, by default, I'm looking at, you'll see in the address bar, I don't know if you can see this, this is the latest. So this is the latest version of Kotlin, which is uh, 1.5.3. Um, and those are the document docs I'm looking at. Now, if you were using an older version, which I wouldn't uh, suggest that you, uh, you use, um, you, would, you would select a different version there and, and that would update things accordingly. The other thing that can be a little bit uh, confusing here is this little uh, area here where it says common, JVM, JS, and native. Um, and right now you'll see that uh, common and JVM are selected, JS and native are, are not selected. So what's going on here? So one of the cool things about Kotlin is that the language can actually be used in a variety of different ways. So you can write Kotlin code that runs in something called the Java Virtual Machine which is a specific piece of software that's built to run Java code, but it's already installed on many, many, many computers, and is actually the basis on some level of all of the apps that run on Android, for example, all use the, the a Java virtual machine. JS and native, so what are these, right? So common is, means that we're looking at methods that are common to all of these, what are called targets. JVM means that we're looking at stuff that's actually designed for the JVM. Um, JS and native are parts of the Kotlin standard library that are intended for use on other types of platforms. For JS stands for JavaScript, that's for use in the browser. So you can actually use Kotlin to build things that run directly in the browser. It's a totally other class, much, much less another subject. Um, and then native means that you can use Kotlin to compile uh, to create code, I'm trying to figure out how to explain this at this point in the semester, um, that runs directly sort of on the underlying hardware. And that may not make a huge amount of sense to you right now, uh, but all to say that for this class, and when you're typically when you're working with Kotlin, what you're interested in is code that runs on the JVM. If you're using one of those other targets, you probably know that you're using it, and then you would select that target to see additional um, information about stuff that's present when you're using that target, or uh, features that might not be there. Anyway, all to say that we've got the right set of options selected. Uh, so let's look a little bit uh, at what's in here. Let me see if I can find something that's um, that's kind of kind of fun. So here is uh, let's check this out. So this is a this is a class called String Builder, um, and it says uh, it can be efficiently perform multiple string manipulation operations. And actually, this is something that's uh, borrowed from Java. Java has a version of this as well. Um, the idea here, I don't want to get into too many details about this. Uh, you can certainly read the documentation. My goal wasn't to provide an overview in a particular piece of the Kotlin Standard Library. Uh, but the idea with the string builder is that it can help improve the performance of certain types of operations that are done on strings. So imagine that 
I'm building a string in a loop and I'm appending to it over and over again. It turns out that that's not particularly efficient. There's a better way to do it. And if you really care about the performance of that operation, which normally we don't, uh, but if you did, you could use the string builder to help speed it up. Uh, so this is the kind of stuff that you're going to find in here. And down here, what we, what we find are different uh, information about different methods that we can use. So the first thing we'd have to figure out is how do we create one of these in the first place. And then we would find out down here different information about the methods that can be called. Um, and then over here, you'll see this is uh, the target. So this is available in all targets. And this is something, this means what version was it introduced in. Now, one of the interesting things over here is that you'll see that this is crossed out, right? So let me talk just briefly about something else. You'll see that this is deprecated. What does that mean? Deprecated uh, refers to functionality that is still present in the library. So you can still use this method, but what Kotlin, what the Kotlin developers are telling you is stop using it uh, because it's not the right way to do things anymore. And they may be a different way. Um, or, you know, this method may not be supported. Sometimes when a method becomes deprecated, it means that the next version of the library won't even have that method anymore. So it's kind of a warning to you if you write code in Kotlin and you're using this particular method that you need to kind of start replacing it with something else. Um, and some of these are, are, are sort of operations that we might uh, be familiar with from strings, right? So for example, a string builder has a reverse method that just return reverses the contents of it. Um, you know, and it has a substring method, right, which is similar to string. So some of this is stuff that, you know, we, we've seen before and we're kind of, uh, we're used to uh, with strings. And so this is how you use this. Um, you know, I typically find it so, you know, this type of documentation is, is useful when you're trying to, trying to figure out like everything that something can do. I typically find a lot more helpful to search online for examples of somebody using one of these. So sort of, you know, you Google example of someone using, example of Kotlin string builder and you find some sample code that somebody might have written showing you exactly what it can do. Um, and that's usually kind of a better starting point. And then once you start to get familiar with it, playing around with it a little bit, then you might come back here to find out like exactly how a specific method works or to explore the other things that it's capable of. So there, uh, we're gonna look at a, in a little more detail at a couple of other parts of the Kotlin Center Library, but I just wanted to use this as a chance to do an overview, talking a little bit about kind of, you know, how to use this type of documentation and what are some of the considerations uh, when we're looking at it.